This is Twit. You and Megan did a really good job on covering uh, notebooks and tablets. This is because her daughter was yes. going into high school and wanted. she wanted to know, should I get Windows, Mac, or Chromebook? I told her Chromebook. Yeah, I I'd actually I just got an uh, R13 that I'm I'm loving. That's the Acer R13. Acer. It's the uh, a convertible that also runs the uh, Android apps as nice. well, and it's nice. really really well done. But we, we figured you've done that to death. You've you've got it. You gave them the, you the definitive it out. guide. We you don't need to go uh, more on that. No. Precisely. So instead, what if we looked at some of the accessories that I'm thinking people should have in their bags right. as you're going back to school, either as a high school student or a college student. There are a couple of things that you should think about including in your gear bag. I like one of them right away. Oh, uh, the first one is this is the super simple one and the one that you can just buy right off the of the base. This is a just a, a USB drive, so it's not sexy, you but You need one of those. You do need these. And what I like about these uh, from Kingston is the fact that they control uh, they have both USB 3 and USB C oh, support. Oh, isn't that sweet? That's actually super it's important. Got, it's like a double adapter, Type C and Type A. Precisely. And if you format this with the uh, XFAT, it means it will work on Mac, it'll work on Windows, it will work on Linux just fine. I can plug this into my Windows PC, load a bunch of files into it, and then plug it into my uh, my USB C enabled Android phone. And it works just fine. Now you have to have USB to go to do that. Right. So not so all Android phones will do precisely. that. Precisely. That is still very cool. Right. Or yeah. or the uh, USB C port on your MacBook. This will work just as fine on that as well. So I mean, if That's you're everything. And these are not expensive. I mean, you're, you're looking at twenty bucks for the thirty-two gigabyte versions. You're looking at about thirty dollars for the sixty-four gigabyte versions. I picked up a ten pack of these things for about <laughs> a ten pack. I, well, because I use them all the time for about two hundred and twenty bucks. And uh, with all the 64 gigabyte versions, and this, these have taken over my bag. I That's have not nothing bad. but these. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. However, um, I was going to show you something in my bag. Oh, that's you've, very oh you've got similar. the adapter. I have no, but what I have is a terabyte hard drive. This is one of those Samsung. Where is it? The problem is it's too small, and I keep losing it. That is the one of these Samsung. That's what I thought you were going to talk about. This is a great idea for a backup drive. Look at that. That's that nice. is a terabyte nice SSD, and, and they have a, uh, now a two terabyte version of this from Samsung. They're not. <laughs> see how easy that was to steal? Uh, there. <laughs> And of course, it is USB uh, Type Three, so it's very, very fast. Uh, that means this can be used easily yeah. uh, for a student or anybody who needs a lot of storage to back up things like your your schoolwork, but also audio and video, uh, movies, whatever you need. So that's that's a really nice. I like that. This reminded me of yours. I thought, you know, solid state storage has come along. Oh, I, I've long got a little way. something like that. But before I get to that, I mean, one terabyte. That's that's pretty Isn't that good. Amazing? I like that. I like or that. Or two. Or uh, or you could go. Uh, oh, oh, I don't know. How about, uh, now what do you got? Two terabytes. Oh yeah, you show <laughs> off. You. Okay. What is that? This is a Kingston. Uh, this is two terabytes on a flash drive. See, that's even that's even more storage. Uh, this, this is kind of neat looking too. It's neat looking. Now, now this this is more or less a showpiece. They uh, they showed off the one terabyte version at CES a couple of years back, and then this year they had the two terabyte version. A little pricey, Leo. How much? Oh, this might. Go for fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> so okay, but you're paying for this the beautiful aluminum styling. This is probably not back to school, but yeah, holy cow! And it's it's pretty fast. Actually, this is much faster than most uh, USB flash drives. Uh, this one will run three hundred megabytes per you second. You know what this is? And two hundred right. You've heard of geek battles? Yeah, and rap battles. That's this all is this a is. Geek battle. Yep. Back and forth. Back and top that. I can top that. This right, is this is the that. drop the mic version. So, this, oh, one terabyte. Oh, that's cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> two terabyte data traveler. <laughs> But it is a little pricey. It's pricey. So what I would say is, I mean, th yeah, this is bragging rights. That's why I keep it in this really cool case and I don't really use it. It's it's just something that I can show that, yes, that technology does exist. However, Leo, if people oh. are willing to put a little bit of time into it, yeah. they can make their own. That's so much faster than anything they're going to be Wait able to buy. Minute. Make your own hard drive? Make what is this? Make your own. So this is something that I made on Know How not too long ago. This is just an enclosure. This is a Sabrent enclosure, and these enclosures will run you about $14 each. And inside is an mSATA drive. Now, these mSATA drives can be incredibly fast. They will go the full speed of the SATA spec, but then I can enclose it in this USB uh, enclosure, which is USB 3, which gives me ridiculous speeds. In fact, we've got a couple of links here for the, uh, the 500 gigabyte mSATA card, a Samsung, is going to run you about $166. This will give you half a terabyte of storage. Nice. And the thing about that is 
that storage doesn't run at 300 megabytes per second read and 200 megabytes per second write. This is 560 oh, that's megabytes nice. per second read, 550 megabytes per that second write. That is very high speed. That's like a solid state disk this drive is a as solid opposed state. to solid state memory. Precisely. NFC memory. Yeah. I mean, you, you really do use the that's full nice. capacity that's of a USB-C. Really nice. yeah. yeah. And uh, the equivalent USB drive, which would be slower, would cost about 40% more. So if you're willing to build your own, uh, you can get this. Now, there's another, there's a geek advantage to doing this, Leo, and I, I know most of our Wait. listeners don't care. Yeah. Uh, but do you remember there was a threat called bad USB? Yes. Uh, 18 months ago. Yes. Right? Yes. And the whole idea was they figured out that the firmware on a USB drive, be it a, a, a USB stick or even right. a USB printer, could be overwritten. Yes. And then they could hide something in the storage, some malware payload, and you would never know it's there. That's why when you see a USB drive on the yeah, ground, don't it. pick it up and stick it in your computer. Never. Because it could take over your system. Precisely. But if you do it this way, if you use this, uh, this build your own, the thing is, the storage is actually separate from ah, the nice. controller. Right. So if I if I had worries, I could always pull the control oh. the storage out, plug it straight into an MSATA controller. So there's no USB translator. Oh. And I can see exactly what's on the drive. Uh, that's again totally geek. Most of you don't care, but if you did worry about bad USB, this is actually a good solution for well, you. Well, now that you've brought that up, the geek battle goes on. Oh, oh no! Plan it this way. <laughs> By the way, I should mention that that Samsung SSD I was talking about is the T5. Nice. It's about $400 for a terabyte. For $800, you can get two terabytes okay. on that. Okay, yeah, no. Uh, this Game is on. the solution to bad USB. This is, well, Steve Gibson calls it a USB condom, but I think <laughs> we probably should call it something else. But it this works. PortaPow. And what this is, is if you find a USB key on the street or whatever, uh, this isn't going to solve that problem because you wouldn't be able to use the data. But what this does solve is the issue, and it's still a bad USB mm -hmm. issue, of mm -hmm. charging. So when you're going around and you want to plug your charger, let's say at the airport, they put USB uh, Never ports. Trust those. Don't trust them, right? You don't know what's going to happen if you plug your phone or your computer into one of those chargers. Unless you have the PortaPow, the USB condom, you plug your phone into that end, you plug this end into you know the stranger's USB port, and you're safe. This conducts charging only, no data. So this protects you against bad USB. Leo, do you remember the days when we were naive and we just thought, hey, <laughs> yes, look, there's a USB port, I'll get some charge. I'll plug into it. You can't do that can't anymore. Do it anymore. We, for a while, there it is, port pow and it's only $12.99. So this is a very handy thing. It also has one little feature that I haven't tested. They call it the smart charge chip. If your phone can do quick charging, sometimes this will turn that slow charging port that oh, you've yes. seen into a quick charging port. Right, right. I, I haven't tried it to know enough that that works. I just use it as a... Well, as you a, disconnect the data pins, and so the, the chip isn't always trying to renegotiate. It just right. says, oh, full power. Uh, full power. Go. I'll use it all. You get it all. Oh, you know how it works. Oh, You're yeah. smart. Yeah. Smart man. <laughs> all <laughs> okay. right, what else you got? I got a big bag here. I can counter anything. Well, as long as you're dropping <laughs> USB condoms on things, I'm thought. Well, let's talk about some safe power. Now, safe. This power. is as simple as it gets. Bring your own with you. It's I the actually only do real have way. a five pack of these things because people are always <laughs> asking <laughs> for for batteries. Uh, this is the a uh, an anchor. Uh, this is their PowerCore Mini. These things are 14 bucks. You can get them for under $10 each. I uh, love Anchor's stuff. Oh, they work so well. They're this, fantastic. This is a, a 3350 milliamp hour capacity. It could do one amp charge. This is about as basic as it gets, but what I like about this is I could lose it and not feel too bad. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it is kind of limited. It could give your iPhone a charge. It could give your Android phone a charge, but right. this is not going to do see, much See, this more. one does, uh, this has, uh, let me see here, just real quickly, 10,000 <laughs> milliamp hours. <laughs> this is from Alki, which is like Anchor, but it's another company that does some very good stuff. I carry this around with me because it does smart charging. It, of course, will uh, charge a variety of devices. It has a nice readout letting you know how much power is left. And with 10,000 milliamp hours, you could charge a lot of things with this one. Well, you probably have even yeah, a bigger one. 10,000 milliamp hours, that's not bad, but I, I kind of like, uh, how about 27,000. No! <laughs> let's just, let's go that. Let's, oh, let's that's say that's another anchor stakes. device. This, this is an anchor device. Okay, and okay. I walked right into that one, didn't I? It's not just a big battery, Leo. There's more? There's, okay. Oh, first of all, let's think about what that, what that kind of capacity means. This yeah. could charge your iPhone 7 or 8, depending on which version you have, uh, 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 13 times. 
It could charge your one plus isn't it? seven and a half times. It could Jeez. charge your high end Chromebook five times. How many milliamp hours? 20? 27,000 milliamp Jeez. hours. But here's the thing, Leo, and this is why I think you're going to want this. See this USB C port? This is high power enough to charge a laptop. So this will power your MacBook. How many how many watts are coming out of that thing? Uh, this will do 30 watt. 30 watt. 30 watt. So that's amazing. It will charge a MacBook. Yeah. So I've got that's to, amazing. I've got this little Toshiba you know, here. You could probably charge this. Yeah. Actually, uh, we could we could plug that in. The I'm, light. It's all right. Do your Toshiba. Light the power right up. Anything could power Plenty this thing. Plenty of power. Yeah. Let me see if the key. It, there's a little power. Yep. It's powering it. It's Look powering, yeah. And it will it will charge this Toshiba. It will charge a MacBook. I've tried it with every USB device I have. It does provide full USB. -C 30 spec. watts is enough for a, a lot of devices. Right. You could even slow charge a uh, ThinkPad with that. And it also fast charges. If you were to charge a 27 uh, watt hour battery on a regular charger, it would take something like two days to go from zero to full. This will do it in just under four hours because it will do fast charging to the USB-C port. So this is one of these devices that you could have in your backpack and it's everything. It will charge your phones, it will charge your tablets, it will fast charge all those devices, plus it will provide power for your laptop. It becomes your one-stop shop for, uh, for I love that. And if you have a briefcase or a, a purse, you can carry that around. It's a, it's a pound and a half. so It's, it's heavy. Yeah, it's a little heavy. Yeah. A little heavy. But, I mean, the utility of, of being able it's to fantastic. charge everything yeah. in your bag, that's pretty good. You know what I like to charge? My speakers. I like Ooh. to be, I like to have portable speakers with me. When we're on the airplane or on a boat or whatever, you could listen with headphones, but I really want to blast everybody out with my movies. What can I do? How can I listen Whoa, look at the size of those guys. You know, Leo, I'm glad you asked. I actually bought the little Fugu because you recommended these. I, did, I love these. I love these. They're, they're, they sound very good. They're yeah. light. They last forever on these charge. Are, these are bigger. These are bigger, and there's a reason for that. That's because you like the Sonos system, right? I am a big Sonos fan, yeah. And what's the one thing Sonos does that no other speaker does really well? Internet radio, and uh, and more importantly, I know what you're going for, party mode, where you can yeah. have speakers in every room. And it's and if you've ever tried this with Bluetooth or even Wi-Fi yeah. speakers, they lag. They, if they're out of sync, it sounds like you're in an echo chamber. Precisely. You want them to all be precisely synced, then that's one of the, that's like the secret sauce. It's so only Sonos can do that. And 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 uh, Fugu took a look at that, and they said, could we create something similar? Really? And they did. They created a pairing mode and these two speakers are actually linked together so they sync I am getting sound out of both of these I can put them on I don't hear any echo any lag at rooms. all they're the, exactly the same well let yeah. me walk over here let's see I'm gonna turn it up way way loud oh, oh. that's me sorry <laughs> you... all right it's way way loud I'm over here now turn yours way lay loud same sound there's no echo it's perfect and it sounds good. <laughs> These sound really good, don't they? They sound fantastic. They're this phenomenal. F, how do you spell fugu? F-U-G-O-O, -O, just like the puff puffer pufferfish puffer that no one should eat. Don't eat, pu don't eat fugus, either the pufferfish or the speakers. The other thing I like about fugus is these outer wraps are replaceable. Yes. You can get different colors, styles. They really look good. That's a nice one. Oh, and That's they've canvas. done something very retro. They've given us a, an audio import. So, you know, if you ever wanted to plug in a 3.5 millimeter jack, nice. you could still do that. Really nice. Yeah, four drivers. You're talking about 20 watts. That's 93 decibel sound pressure. Uh, and the fact that they can be paired... I mean, it, it puts this on par with speaker systems that cost two to four times as much. Nice. That's uh, a great price. Yeah. And these will go for about 140 bucks if you buy it straight from Very from good Fugu. deal. Yeah. Well, I don't have speakers with me, but I do think that when you go back to school, you want to worry about bad guys stealing your stuff. Oh. And I know you know what this is, but I want to give this a plug. I love it. Ubico, Y-U-B-I-C-O. They make these little keys that plug into the USB ports of your devices. And they they're work with everything because these keys are, in effect, typewriters. They're mm -hmm. keyboards. So when you plug it in, it'll press the button. And this is the, the newest YubiKey, the YubiKey 4. This will spit out a one-time code. Every 30 seconds, it changes. And I've paired this with Facebook. I've paired this with LastPass. Uh, many places will support YubiKey as second factor authentication. This is more secure than having a number texted to you. You just have to put this on your keychain. And now whenever I want to do second factor on many, many places, I just plug the YubiKey 4 in, $40, and it will type 
a one-time password. I don't have to type it. I don't have to remember it. And it is highly secure. The bad guy can't steal your phone number to get your number. They would actually have to steal your YubiKey. So if you're looking for a way, even a high schooler, to be more secure, and I think actually that's probably a good time to start really thinking yep. about security. YubiKey makes a variety of... I also have the YubiKey Neo on my keychain. That's one with an uh, with a um, NFC chip in it. And for devices that don't have USB ports like your smartphones, you can tap it to the back of an Android phone and it will do the same thing. It'll, it'll hand off that, that uh, long, very, very long code. I mean, well, what's the best password? It's the password that you don't care if anyone else knows. You don't need to know it. Right. So you still have your pass. So well, last pass, for instance, I keep all my passwords in there. I want to keep that very secure. That's a one point of failure. You know, if, if, if somebody got my last pass vault, I'd be dead. <laughs> right. So I really want to secure that. So I secure it with a very long 20 character password that only I know. And I can't unlock it without my YubiKey. Sometimes that seems a little inconvenient, but boy, it sure makes you a lot more secure. I thought I'd throw that in. No, that's nice. I yeah. like that. Security is, is going to be a bucks. big thing when you're going away, yeah. especially to a college campus. But, you know, Leo, I wanted to include something in back to school that wasn't for the student. These are all gadgets and tools for kids. Kids, yeah. What about something for the parents who are uh, trying to do a digital cleanse for their kids. Oh, a giant router. A giant router. Oh, you love this router. I know you do. I've heard you talk about it. This oh, is the yes. Synology. I, they, we both use the Synology NASAs, but they recently started making routers, They too. did. They started with the 1900 AC. This is the 2600 AC, so it's the newer version. Faster processor, a bit more memory. Uh, it does everything you would expect a high-end router to do. So, I mean, you could run this as a NAS. You could plug a hard drive into this and share it with everyone. It's even got a media card reader, so you could go that route. But what the reason why I've brought it on for this is not the fact that it's got best-of-class throughput or incredible wireless uh, connectivity. It's the fact that it's really, really Parent friendly. Now, this <laughs> by which you mean dummy friendly. Dummy friendly. Okay. Dummy friendly. <laughs> I just want to get that clear. Oh, uh, oh. Now, see, don't oh, get your dad is smart. See what you did. Tyler's looking at his dad, saying, "Dummy, you're a dummy." It's actually, Jonathan <laughs> is very smart. But Jonathan, you may want this router. I think you might want yeah. this router. Yeah. Uh, uh, Keep one, Tyler off. You know. Exactly. The internet. One of the things that, that parents are starting to realize is I need to keep my, my kids off the internet so that they're sleeping. They, that's, to me, that's the big thing. I'm not so much worried about protecting them against no. bad sites. I want to be able to say, internet off. Yeah. Go to bed. You know, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, if you've got to be problem. up at 6. Do you ever do that, Tyler? You stay up late with your phone and, and surf the internet and Snapchat. Ah, see, Dad's and, oh, saying yeah, yes. Yeah, see that. <laughs> so this, this can help stop that? This can help stop that because they've made the interface so easy. Now, Alex, if you can go to my computer, um, what we're going to be able to show you is this, this is what the basic network interface inside this router looks like. But here's the fun part. It shows you all the devices that are connected and it allows me to do parental control. So let's, for example, Jerry. Jerry, sometimes he stays on a little too He's long. He's a bad boy. He's a bad boy. So what we can do is we can say, <laughs> hey, you know what? Every day between, say, that time and oh, that time, nice. it, he, it doesn't work. So his, his connectivity will be disabled. He can still connect to That's all the really resources nice. inside the network. So he can print. Okay. He could say access. He can do NAS. homework. He can he write do papers, homework, but, but he, he can't go out to the outside precisely. world. And that's you know, this is one of those things where you can do it by device. It's not the entire router, so the parents can still work just fine. Right. But you pick the individual devices that are being used by your kids, and you say you've got a curfew. You're not allowed to use the internet past midnight all the way up to six in the morning. Very, very nice. Now it's not just that though, Leo, because there's this, more. There's more. There's more. How would you? How much would you expect to pay for it now? Uh, no, the uh, what I really like about it is the fact that there's a an app. So they've created an app both for Android and iOS that allows me to see at a glance. And uh, let's see if you can get in on this one. Um, I can I can do all the same thing. So I can find individual devices and then I can ban them. So as a parent, I could say, hey, you know what? I see that you're doing something right now. Um, I'm just gonna turn you off. And it is literally that. And I've just knocked that device off the internet. Uh, and the, the other part about this is it also allows you to see at a glance exactly how much data is transiting through my network and which devices are doing all the data transiting. So I can say, hey, wait a minute, this desktop here, I'm pulling down a bit too much to be just email. It's probably connected to Netflix. Uh, and I could even break it down further and I could see where that traffic is going. I could say, hey, there's no reason for you. If you think, if you say you're doing homework at, at 10 o'clock 
why are you connected to Amazon Prime Video? Uh, and this, this is the kind of granularity that I love. And the fact that they put it on a smartphone means that parents can sit and just take a quick look and say, nope, you're done. Can you use your Sonos to disable your son's internet? I cannot. No, I'm not your Sonos. You're uh, Echo Home. Can, uh. you use your e <laughs> can you use your Amazon Echo to disable your son's internet? I cannot. You don't have a son, so that's really a yeah, no, thank point you. is moot. But I can. I can say Echo, pause Michael's internet. And okay. that's because we use Eros, okay? That's pretty cool. And Eros is a sponsor. I'm going to show you the Eero interface. The other thing I can do, because you assign every, everything that's on the Eero, all the devices on the Eero, the other thing I can do is I can actually look at Michael's profile. I can see what devices are on it. I can set scheduled pauses. Or if I decide, hey, it's time for Michael to get off the Internet, Michael, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fortunately, this, 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 this iPad's not on the Internet, but that would pause the Internet even if I'm not home. Oh, that is a nice feature. Nice. This is something new that Eero has just added called Eero Plus to their... They've always had this pause the internet, but they've added these safe filters to the uh, new Eero Plus. I don't know why this, lap, this uh, iPad's not on the air, but that's really a nice feature. The ability to pause somebody remotely, and of course I've assigned every device in the house to either me, to Lisa, or to Michael, our 14-year-old, and I can even have different profiles for what's blocked and what's not yeah. blocked uh, per device and per person. This is the, this is the new Eero Plus. And I have to say, I, I really, I think they've done a very nice job uh, with setting it up. So Synology is not the only company that no. has access, uh, uh, access control. Eero, Synology, stuff, Asus. A lot of them yeah. will do this. Um, but I have to say, I'm very impressed with what Eero has done. And especially just being able to say, Echo, pause, Michael. Now you might say, that wouldn't Michael just they say, Echo, unpause, Michael? But no, it only pauses. You have to go into the app to unpause. There we go. Okay. There we go. Michael, I'm sorry I paused you. Let me just, <laughs> let me just unpause you right now. I love it that I can do this even when I'm away from home. And, and I love it that these tech companies are finally realizing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Give the parents some control yeah. so that they can be parents. Yeah. And I mean, I'm with you. I'm not for blocking sites or anything because I think that's something you got to teach to your kids. Right. But... The internet can be addicting, and I've done it where I'm, I've gone Staying down a click hole at 2 in the morning. a big issue. It's horrible. I mean, yeah. and next thing you know, you've got three hours sleep for right. a long day. So this yeah, would be a good way to do it. Yeah, Michael will do that. And it's not his fault. He, I, don't, I don't blame him. He's got a curious mind. And, and it's, we've all done it. Once you, a click hole is a good way to describe yeah. it. Once you start clicking, you can't stop. Well, wow. We just uh, Who won this geek battle? I think I'll give it to I'm you. I'm going to give it. No, no. I think Father Robert, in every respect, you topped me you, each and every you time. You had the arrow. We're going to do this more often, though. I like, <laughs> I like this one. This is good. Uh, a bunch of stuff that might be useful for your back-to-school kid and for you as a parent, because parents have to go back to school. We say right? back to school for your kids, but these are really all for you. Well, you know that. <laughs> They're right? all toys. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Really great stuff. Really a lot of fun.